This video might be of interest if you can't afford to have thousands of dollars wrapped up in inventory carbide inserts. <laughs> I'm coming around. Okay, the old guy made it. Let's see, how's that look? I think okay, maybe I'll turn that up a little bit there. Okay, this is an early uh, Cincinnati number two tool and cutter grinder. And it's just a really basic machine. The head does not tilt and uh, it just swivels. There's ways you can get around it to grind primary and secondary clearances on flutes. Um, but that's not what I'm going to talk about right off. <clears throat> what, what I... Uh, want to uh, show is what I know most, you know, what this machine does for me and, and how it helps me uh, run a machine like the uh, More Jig Bore or uh, the fabulous Monarch 10 E lathes. Is this machine is central to getting the most out of those machines because then you have full control of your tool. And if you don't have this to have good control, you have to have a whole bunch of real expensive inserts. And they're special because they're high shear. So I have to make my own tools. And that's the way, uh, the way it is. Now, this is the tools you buy for boring. Okay, that's a criterion type. It's probably made in China. And, the, you know, they, they work pretty good. The carbide's pretty thin, you know, and, you know, you, you can't vary it much. Uh, and there's not much to work with if you want to change the top angle or make it high shear. So I make my own. This is what I make. Okay. And if you look at it, the carbide's really pretty thick. I hope that stays in focus. I'll hold it to the other one. Okay. You can see maybe. <laughs> okay. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, now, I, I mostly use C2 carbide. And you should, I think you should always start with C2 carbide and change only if you need to. And I can get into that in more detail uh, when we do some cuts on the more jig bore. What happens if the carbide's too hard? Okay. Now, the machine itself here, um, uh, the newer ones have controls up front here. Uh, but it, it's a weird machine. Uh, and it's very difficult to video. I've really had to kind of come up with some ideas on how to demonstrate this machine. Because you load it here. And then you'll get around back there and operate it. But you can operate it here. And th this table here uh, probably weighs 300 pounds. And it's on 44, 24 each side, 3 quarter inch ball bearings. And look how easy it is for me to move that by hand. And I actually do that, you know, if I'm grinding something long. I'll, I'll do it by hand and not use these wheels here. This is sort of a, a, a slow feed wheel. It's got a gear. And it, it's sort of useful, but uh, uh, there's another use for it that I'll show later, too. That's even better. Um, okay. Now, um, now what I want to uh, talk about is uh, the work head here. Two. Now that's an important feature, and I think I'll move the uh, camera on in. Now bear with me. I've got some uh, better camera support in the works, and uh, I don't know if I need to lower that or let's try to get it over here. I think Chloe's not happy about any of this. Try it there. I think maybe, maybe I can show you from here. Okay. Let me get back over there. All right. Now, <clears throat> this is a work head here. 
And I've got a four jaw chuck in it. And I'll take that out, set it down here somewhere. Okay, but this, this is an old grinder and it came with an old, um, let me turn it so I, may, <laughs> I can't see myself. Okay, there we go. All right, I think you can see the work out okay. So it comes with like a large brown and sharp taper. And what I did was I found an old 5C adapter for a lathe and I ground the OD of it and I pushed it in there and it didn't run too true. So I got an internal attachment for this machine and I ground it internally and trued it up. It's a little bit chewed up. But I didn't have to clean it up all the way, just enough. And it runs true. It's a, that's a very nice setup. Now, to draw the collet in, I, I whip this up. Now, on the back here, let's whip that around here. That's a 50 taper there. So I took and I made this piece here uh, to fit in that 50 taper. See? Now... <laughs> I, I, a crazy inventions of mine, right? So if I'm going to show you the thrust bearing, it's a Temkin bearing. And I did the same thing on, uh, uh, on a closer for the Monarch uh, 10 E. Let me get this around. And see, I have the Temkin bearing rakes pressed in the here. Okay. Temkin bearing mounted there. The race there. That drops down, and then I got a snap ring, see? And I, I only needed a 7 8 diameter all the way through, so it's no sense going with bigger stuff. So I made this sleeve here with the 5C thread. Okay, see that? That's how I did that. And I thought you might want to see that. And I did a lot of it on the machine. Look, are we still there? Whoa! Okay. All right. Now, to, when I first got started with this machine, I've had this machine over 30 years. So it's kind of surprising. And let me find that part right here. Um, I, I stuck a collet chuck in the 50 taper. Okay. But it was an old time chuck years ago. It's an Ericsson. Uh, 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 call it and uh, this is a uh, ER40 and uh, the, 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 These things are cheap just just dirt cheap nowadays So anything 50 you want to stick in there is Cheap and you can stick all kinds of things in there and figure out different ways to do things But I thought I'd show you that 5c thing. That's kind of deluxe now, now, one of the drawbacks, I want to point this out, is when I fit that in there, it ended up thin, and I can't remove it, but I have no reason to, okay? So it's a little on the thin side to remove and replace. All right. Hmm. Okay, now what I'm going to do is set this up and I'm going to start grinding on a carbide blank. And that's a really easy thing to do. And uh, let's see the time there. Uh, yeah, we're doing okay. We're doing okay. The, the camera's still going. So I got, the way I got this set up. Okay, I'm going to get this uh, 5C draw bar back in there. Get it in there. Long winded they are, you know. Okay. <laughs> okay, now there's a device for grinding tools called a uh, Rockwell Univice by the, by the same uh, makers of the famous Rockwell Puny Saw. <laughs> okay, now, now the Univice is kind of like the workhead here. You can, you can look them up. They sell them on eBay. They're 250 bucks, but they're kind of hard to use, I think. You know, it'll, it has a vice-like thing, and it'll tilt it all different ways with uh, 
uh, this type of uh, setup. Now, this is a time-saving thing because time's important. And uh, so I'm just going to put this in there. Now, it, it's real easy to set this up. See, I can, I, I can use a square and, and adjust it. I can also put it at an angle by using a bevel protractor. See? Then, then swiveling this. Just a lot of uh, options. You can also square it up from the side. Right there. And then it's got a movable uh, scale with a limited uh, range. Uh, and some tick marks at 90 degrees. Now, I want to dig this out. I, I forgot to. Bear with me. Hang on. Because everything goes flying. I think it's here. Maybe I moved it. There it is. Okay. Now, you can index with this head. And does this index set up? See, this lever goes here. Then this... Uh, 24 space ring bolts onto the front part of the head here and you can index, you know. You can grind a hex in a, in a carbide shank if you so inclined. Okay, that's 